So, once again, if you have missed something, you go to goo.gl slash small g big l small f big s big t small f. And you will get a copy of my code. It's working. I have tested it. So, one uh, plot which is useful for factor variables, we have already done it once, but we may do it once again. Uh, I think we need, yeah, uh, we can do the mosaic plot. Mosaic plot is a special type of plot designed specially for factor variables. Uh, so it's not useful for numeric variables, only for factor variables. So if I say the source of data, my data is located in data set, I, let's say, T8, and now I apply uh, it uses uh, as a formula syntax to make plots. So the usual formula has uh, tiled here and after tiled with the use of plus sign we list some factor variables. For example I may list uh, uh, passenger class uh, passenger class uh, plus Let's move on the next line, otherwise it will be invisible. <coughs> plus uh, sex, plus survived. Yeah? And uh, let's look at the plot. I will also add the shading. Uh, why it's so ugly? Ah, yeah, because it's too small. I will zoom the plot in some seconds. One plot which is designed to plot a lot of factor variables. You mention the source of the data frame, the source of data, and you list the variables you would like to plot factor variables. Okay? May I zoom the plot? So mosaic plot, mosaic plot is a function located in the VCD package. Uh, there are some other functions uh, in the VCD package which are useful for working with vector variables, but I think mosaic plot is um, the most exceptional one because we may plot many factor variables on the same plot. I may add one or two more uh, factor variables. So okay, I zoom and let us interpret the plot. What to do when it can uh, define the function mosaic? The function mosaic is located in VCD package. VCD. Uh, so you just press Ctrl Enter on this line. If it says that the VCD package is not available, so you go to tools, install packages, and you install the missing VCD package. Okay, let me zoom. So, first, uh, my data set uh, is divided by passenger class, first, second, and third. Uh, then each class, first class, second class, third class, is divided by sex. And then each uh, subgroup, uh, for example, uh, these are females from third class, is divided into survived and uh, into not survived and survived. Each group may be divided farther. It will go uh, in a spiral. So if I add more variables, it will go. I may add uh, not only three factor variables, but five, six, and will continue the spiral. So passenger class uh, goes from the left side. Uh, sex goes from. Uh, top 
uh, survive it from right side, the next variable will be from bottom, the next one from left, and so on. So I see the same uh, information on this plot. I see that uh, the most frequent class is third class, yeah? It's roughly twice more frequent than first or second class, yeah? In uh, first class, uh, the number of males and females is uh, rather equal, yeah? And in the second class, the number of males and females is rather equal, but there are a little bit more males than females, okay? And in third class, the disproportion is much greater. Uh, most, uh, most people from uh, the third class are males, okay? Yeah. And then each subgroup is divided further. If you are a woman uh, from the first class, then only a teeny proportion of women from the first class uh, has died, yeah, zero, one, zero, one. Each subgroup is divided by the variable survived, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. So if if uh, you are female, uh, if you are a woman from the first class, you may be happy. <laughs> and if you are uh, a male from the third class, uh, you are unhappy. Yeah. So what does the coloring mean? We have colors here. Are automatically test uh, the hypothesis uh, that variables uh, like uh, uh, sex, passenger class, and survived are independent. So uh, if uh, um, the size of group corresponds to the case of uh, uh, no dependency between the variables, it's great. If there are too many uh, observations in the group, it's uh, blue. If there are too few observations in uh, uh, subgroup, it's red. Okay? So if uh, I imagine a situation when the passenger class, sex, and survived are independent, there will be uh, my, uh, there will be much more survived uh, uh, males in the third class. There will be uh, less uh, uh, less died uh, males in the third class. The number of uh, survived females uh, in the third class will be roughly the same in the uh, uh, case of independency of variables and so on okay so automatically I visualize the case of independent uh, variables so gray groups uh, will stay the same if the variables would be independent uh, red will be increased uh, in the case of independency and blue group will decrease in the case of independency of uh, uh, variables. Okay? On the passenger class. Is it connected to passenger class? If it was independent so, so from the class. If, uh, uh, if all three, uh, all, if all uh, three variables would be independent, then uh, these small uh, subgroup will be bigger yeah because it's red yeah this blue subgroup will be smaller in the case when all three variables would be independent okay so I may add five variables it will be easy it will be uh, let's uh, add uh, here for example uh, the variable part two yeah I may add let's look at modified plot yeah, I add one factor variable plus yeah. Yeah, one more variable yeah now I have passenger class sex 
number of children, children or parents, and then survived. Yeah. Um, let's try to see something on this plot. It's uh, it's difficult to uh, when you have a lot of variables. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to present the relationship between them. So it's our best try to. Uh, it's our best attempt to visualize such a complex um, dependency between four variables. So, for example, we divide first we divide our passengers by passenger class, yeah. Then we divide our each uh, passenger class we divide by yeah by sex. Okay. So then each group we divide further by. Yeah, by number of uh, children or parents. And then we divide each group, we divide by whether the person has survived or not. Yeah? And for example, we may see something uh, which is uh, different. For example, if you have uh, uh, something which is uh, interesting, yeah? something which is interesting. Uh, the link between uh, the link between number of uh, uh, the link between number of parents or children uh, for uh, these are these are uh, women from third class. Yeah, these block uh, women from the third class. Okay. Because third class, these are women. Yeah. So we see that the more uh, children you have, zero, one, two, the more children you have, uh, the probability of uh, survival goes up or down. The more children you have, the probability of survival. But let's look at this plot. Let's consider this sub. Uh, um, subgroup, yeah, subgroup. Third class women. We have uh, zero. These uh, women have zero children. These women have one children, and these women have two or more children because we have aggregated our levels. Not to have uh, eight levels here. We have only three levels. Zero children, one children, two or more children. Yeah. So if the number of children increases, then the proportion of survived women decreases. decreases. Yeah, reduces. Okay. So here we see that if you are a uh, woman, uh, if you are a woman from a third class. The more children you have, the less is your probability of uh, survival. Okay? Okay. Um, but this uh, uh, relationship is not present, for example, for uh, males. Uh, uh, of the first class, yeah. If you are a male from a third class, this uh, uh, rectangle, this big rectangle, yeah. These are uh, men's from the first class. So it's not uh, this uh, relationship disappears for males in the first class uh, if the number of uh, children goes from zero to one. Uh, so the probability roughly stays the same, but if uh, you have two children, then the probability of uh, survival uh, increases. Okay? No, 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 no. If you go from one to two, this is uh, this is zero, not survived. This is one. Yeah. If you go from one to two. Uh, this is a number, uh, this is, but w w you may just compare 
uh, when uh, you have you are a male uh, from the first class with two children the probability of survival and not survival this is not survival this is zero this is the probability of survival yeah one so the probability is roughly equal yeah it's roughly one half yeah uh, and if uh, you are uh, a man from the first class with zero or one uh, child so then the probability of survival the right one is roughly one third yeah roughly one third one half versus one third one half is bigger yeah so if you, you if you have two children uh, it increases your probability of survival yeah so we may see that the direction of a uh, link is uh, different, okay? But once again, there is no easy way to represent some complex relationship. So you will not, you will not have a simple plot where you can see all the relationship between all the variables you had, okay? So the more variables you have, the more complex is the plot. Uh, either you uh, visualize them one by one, one histogram, one scatter plot, or you try to capture some uh, uh, some complex patterns. Okay. So I will copy all the code with no with no parts uh, on this plot you may even change the order of uh, subdivisions it will change the plot for example if I change the order if I put survived first it will change the plot because the order of plotting yeah it changed a lot First, we divide by survived, not survived, then by passenger class, then by sex. Okay, so on this plot, the order of variables is important. Okay, so once again, if you have uh, uh, a, a lot of numeric variables, you may use uh, the function which uh, we have already used. It's called uh, where it is. It's called mm, pair panels. Yeah. For example, we have used a, a long time ago. We have used the data set on uh, uh, Swiss uh, regions. Yeah. Swiss regions. Yeah. We have used the data set a long time ago. But let's look at it. No problem. Yeah, let's look. Pair plot. Pair, sorry, pairs, pairs panel. Pairs panel Swiss. Yeah, let's look. Uh, the data set Swiss uh, on uh, uh, economics and uh, s um, social indicators of Switzerland uh, one century ago. Uh, pairs panel Swiss. Yeah, because all variables are numeric. I will. I will. To show the comment. Okay. So now, as all variables are uh, numeric, these. Uh, plot is rather good yeah we may see that we may see that catholic in uh, regions are divided so let me recall this small data set on swiss regions uh, each uh, there are for each region of switzerland there are some indicates indicators like uh, woman fertility the percentage of uh, agri uh, of uh, men occupied in agriculture, some uh, variables on examination and education, uh, the percentage of Catholic people in the region, the infant mortality in the region, 
And so, for example, on this plot, um, as all variable sign numerics, these red lines have more meaning. Uh, they show me the uh, dependency between variables. Uh, so I see that the link between examination and uh, agriculture, the percentage of um, people occupied in agriculture is uh, negative. Yeah. The more rural is the region, the less is the result of examination. I see on this plot that uh, uh, our regions are either Catholic or Protestants, so uh, there are almost no region with 50% uh, Catholic, 50% Protestant, so I may uh, conclude that they do not like each other. Um, so I see the positive link, for example, the small positive link between infant mortality and uh, fertility, um, and so on. So uh, correlations are uh, automatically shown in the upper half of the graph. So negative correlation, positive correlation. For to be to uh, show correlation, we have uh, something like core plot. Swiss. Hmm, why it's so strange? Let me zoom it. Hmm. Why? Ah, sorry, I need to calculate correlations first to use core plot. Sorry, just a moment. I will calculate correlations. Let me calculate all correlations. Core. Course equal to correlation for the Switzerland data set and now I may plot correlations mm. I think you may succeed because my the resolution of my screen is too small but yeah something like this So this um, plot uh, shows us the correlations that the correlation between examination and education level is very high. Fertility is correlated with agriculture. Um, okay. So just some plots uh, to show the link between numerical variables okay let's go back to uh, logit regression okay mm -hmm. let's try to uh, show to visualize the result of logit regression first we estimate once again logit model for titanic data set we go back to titanic and logit regression Let's estimate the model. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to load something like logit MFX. Yeah, let's let's load one package, one more package. Oh, yeah, yeah. Library. Library. MFX, you we load the package MFX, MFX, three letters, MFX, yeah, MFX, library, MFX, marginal FX, we have already used it, so it should be installed. And then we may go to estimating models. We estimate logit model. We take data from 
Titanic 8, I think. And we estimate the model survived uh, with explanatory variables like sex, passenger class, passenger class plus age. Survived. We try to explain to predict these variables using regressors, sex, passenger class, and age. We may look at the marginal effects of our model. Yeah. Titanic 8 or we have a Titanic B. Eight. Yeah, we already have T8. We have T7, T6. If you have missed something, you go to this link. Let me copy my code. the new code If you have missed something, you just go this link. I've done it. I've done it. It's okay. I think it should be okay. Let's look at our marginal effects. Let's interpret them. the logic model yes no okay so what are these numbers these are marginal effects because it's very difficult to interpret coefficients themselves in a logic model so we interpret marginal effects if I increase uh, if I take a, an average person uh, an average person means uh, a very strange person it, it has an average age mean age it's uh, uh, he or she is half uh, male or half female because average person on Titanic is neither male neither female uh, it uh, travels uh, um, in uh, something a mix of uh, passenger classes but if I take an average person if I increase an age of an average person the probability of survival will go up or down yeah it will go down by how many roughly by one person uh, roughly by one uh, percentage point yeah because 0 0.008 is roughly one percent yeah so if I increase the age by one the probability of survival will decrease roughly by one percentage point if I move a person into the third class here is the base category is a, uh, 
you see we have two levels for male uh, for, for sex sorry two levels for sex variable male or female we have how many levels for passenger class variable three first second and third yeah <coughs> but in uh, uh, our output we have only one uh, level sex male uh, for variable sex and we have only two levels for passenger class variable third and second uh, third and second the first one is missing and here is sex female is missing why is it so R automatically picks one level as a base level so uh, I think it uses alphabetic ordering so it, it uh, took female uh, level as a base level and the class one as a base level so compared to females males have lower chances of survival okay compared to first class uh, second class is uh, uh, an average person in uh, second class has 26 uh, percent uh, percent points less uh, chances of survival compared to the first class the person in the third class has uh, 54 percentage point less chances of survival okay so R automatically picks up one base category one base level for factor variable if the factor variable has two possible levels so we have only one level present here because the other one is uh, taken as a base level okay so I do not have three levels here for passenger class but only two because the missing one the first class is automatically taken as reference level as reference category uh, so these two are compared to the first class okay and the age is numeric variable so if I increase age by one I see the uh, decrease is measured by df dx okay which effects are significant we have some like mysterious p-values here what do they mean why they are too small that what does that mean Yeah. If they are small, the, the coefficient is significant or not significant? significant? Yeah, significant. So these coefficients are significantly different uh, from zero. Yeah. Automatically, they are compared. The marginal effect is automatically compared with zero. And these p-values say the first p-value corresponds to the first coefficient. Says so the first coefficient is significantly statistically different from zero. The second coefficient is statistically different from zero. The third small p-value smaller than five percent says the third coefficient is statistically different from zero. And the same for the fourth one. Even it seems that in absolute value it's small, 0 0.008. It's statistically significant. The hypothesis that the true coefficient is equal to zero is rejected. Okay. So now let's try to uh, picture uh, marginal, these marginal effects, okay? To show marginal effects in uh, nonlinear models, we will take a specific person and we will change only one characteristics. For example, I may uh, take a, a person which is a female from the first or second class and I may change the age and I will see how the probability of survival will uh, change okay so let's go on uh, I should fix all variables except one and change the values of the remaining variable so I will depict uh, the relationship of probability of survival given by our model um, how it depends on age okay so let's make prediction 
First, uh, I extract from these uh, marginal effects, I extract coefficient, I will say uh, fit is equal to model fit. Uh, now, I will load one more package library, but we have used already, so that shouldn't be a problem. It's already loaded the package broom. Do you know what is broom? Yeah, we, we covered that last week. And also few Yeah. And what is a broom? It's a sweeping device. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So now I fix, uh, uh, I will create a new data frame. Uh, let me glimpse and my old data frame, tit8. Uh, sex is equal to male or female, passenger class is 313. Uh, so I create a new data frame. I create a new data frame like new new data frame uh, data frame And I uh, uh, say, let the age change from 1 to 100. Uh, the sex of this person will be male. And the passenger class, class will be, let's say, let's say second. So I have, for the moment, I have created a new data frame for which I will make predictions. I may glimpse at my new data frame. The age goes from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to 100. The sex is always male. I have fixed the variable sex. The passenger class is always two. And now I think I'm ready to make predictions. I may augment my uh, using the model, oh no, no, sorry, using the fit. I may augment my Summary, sorry, just a moment. Okay, let me do like this predict. Predict. Okay, I understand that passenger class was fit with the type factor, but the type numeric was supplied, so I should specify that it is factor. Yeah, it's factor. Yeah, and this variable is also factor. Uh, I think it will go now. Yeah, it will work now. If I specify that the variable is factor, yeah, I completely forgot to do it fit new data equal to new yeah and uh, I specify the prediction type 
that I would like to predict probabilities yeah I think that's all so now I have made uh, predictions for my uh, new data set for each age uh, of males in second passenger class I have predicted the probabilities uh, of survival and uh, standard error of these are fitted probabilities fitted means predicted predicted or fitted probabilities and standard error is used to build the confidence intervals or predictive intervals but I will not use it I will make point uh, forecasts of probability okay and now I may plot my data and uh, uh, fitted probabilities or just fitted probabilities let me plot at least fitted probabilities So I may plot, uh, type qplot, take data from uh, my fit new fit2 data set, on the x axis I will plot age, on the vertical x I will plot fitted probability, and I will use the line geometry to show my plot. So this is a result of estimation, yeah, because these are predicted probabilities. Because in the data set we have points somewhere, uh, but these are predicted probabilities. If you are a young boy in the second class, you have almost 50% of uh, predicted chances of survival. If you are an old uh, an old uh, person or uh, a man um, with age equal to 100 years in the second class your chances of survival are too small roughly uh, roughly three I think roughly three percent or something like this okay so I have created new data frame uh, you should not forget to specify that these variables are factor variables. Um, now I augment my new data frame using model. Uh, and I plot the data. Okay? I will copy the code once again. Sorry. Yeah. Could you explain uh, QPlot? It's a research install package. It's a ggplot? Yeah, ggplot2. It's in package ggplot2. If something does not work, raise your hand and call for the help. Okay, just a moment, I will post, just a moment, I will post my code, I will post my code library, ggplot2, but I think we have already, so I go here, I put it, edit, <laughs> So now, if something does not work, you go here, blue, point GL, and small W, E, F, C, R, big J.
Okay, now let's uh, using the philosophy of uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. 